Hello and welcome everyone to this important video and today we are going to talk a little bit more about Waymo, my favorite topic. And don't be concerned that I'm just going to bash Waymo, of course there's some bashing here, but this is mostly about the facts, the incident facts of Waymo and why they matter for RoboTaxi. So let me frame it first before we go into this very interesting website here that has the statistics on Waymo crashes and accidents. And what you're going to see on this website is some surprising stuff. But let me first frame it, why it's so important for us with Tesla and for Tesla shareholders. When I looked at RoboTaxi in this great, great, fascinating transformation that's happening, Tesla becoming an AI company, Tesla making most of its money very soon, in my opinion, from autonomy and autonomous transport, and this thing happening faster than people think. If we believe in this thesis, the question is, what are the risks? What can go wrong? And there are two central risks. Forget regulatory, forget operations, forget like how they clean the cars or charge them. This is all trivial stuff. Regulators will not stand in the way of a transformative technology. We already have Sean Duffy and now even European Union starting to accept this whole thing. I am not worried at all. Operational questions. Are you kidding me? Tesla can't figure out how to charge cyber caps. That's a joke. They can't figure out how to clean them. This is stupid. No, there are two central risks in my mind. By far the biggest risk is FSD doesn't work. So we need FSD to actually work, to be a real world intelligence that can actually drive around the cars. But it becomes more and more clear that that risk is kind of mitigated. We understand this works. Does it work perfectly? Of course not, but it works surprisingly well and already beats Waymo in you know, experience, beats it in smoothness of the ride, and it beats it in you know, understanding and the number of situations it understands. It's already becoming clear by the day, which is very exciting, that FSD seems to really work. Of course, there are some edge cases and tweaks we need to do, but that's for another video. The second risk, and this is this video, the second risk is what about accidents? What about the first human getting injured by a robotaxi? What about the first robotaxi crashing into a wall with passengers inside? I hope it never happens, but what about if there is a fatality? Wouldn't that be the end of robotaxi? And isn't that inevitable that this happens at some point? So that was the predicament that many people had. Oh my God, it's a new thing. They're rolling out these self-driving cars. They're driving around like little ghost cars with no one in. And what happens if someone gets injured? Doesn't that mean people will freak totally out? And even if it's inappropriate because it's much safer than a human, no one will care and just say, this robotaxi injured a human, shut it down. Well, the predicament was that this is for sure going to happen. It's like, it's a statistical inevitability. And, you know, is that the end? How will people react to it? Hey, creating these videos is a lot of work. Please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Now let's get back to the video. I found this website that is incredibly interesting because there is one company that has already a thousand cars or something on the road. I think a thousand eight hundred or something it changes right now. And so we can see what the actual statistics are. I was surprised because I don't know about you, but I wasn't sure. I thought Waymo is safe. Waymo doesn't crash cars for whatever reason. And I always attributed that perceived safety that perceived lack of crashes to them doing everything manually, having safety drivers mapping manually the streets out. So I always thought, well, they're buying that safety with an inability to scale with a bad tech and bad business model, but they're putting all the resources on safety. But that's actually not true. The truth is, look at this, look at this. The truth is these are real incidents. These are crashes. These are crashes where Waymo was involved, to be fair. So it can also be another driver crashing into Waymo. So we don't know exactly who's at fault here, but maybe 50-50, I don't know. But definitely sometimes Waymo is at fault and sometimes you can't even determine who was at fault, but crash is crash. And so you see, wow, 696 crashes, actual physical crashes. And here you see cities with accidents. Obviously that's a function of how many Waymos are driving around. So of course, San Francisco, it's totally crowded with Waymos, have, has the most accidents. You see also, of course, with scale, the accidents increase dramatically, not surprising. We don't know exactly if the per Waymo, you know, per deployed Waymo accident rate actually goes down. That would be interesting to see. So it went up from 10 to 80. So that's an 8x increase since 2024. 
if you ask me, there is no way in hell that Waymo actually increased its fleet eightfold since March last year. They did not eightfold increase their fleet. I think they had 600, 700. Now they have 1,800 or something. So maybe they two exits, right? So if Waymo would actually scale their accident rates with the fleet size, they would be here or something. Maybe they would be here. They would not be here. So just looking at that timeline and that accident rate, it seems like Waymo is dramatically increasing their crash rate, meaning they're dramatically decreasing their safety. Think about that. Why is that? Well, we know that they expanded very aggressively into Georgia, into Austin. I think they're panicking because of Tesla, and now they're scaling much faster than before. And that leads to an increase in the crash rate way beyond the increase in the deployment rate. It's very interesting because a co-CEO, the famous co-CEO on her interview said that safety first, blah, 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 looks like they're panicking, they're scaling, and they're crashing at way high rates. Now, you have to do your own research and look into that. I'm not saying it is like that. I'm just connecting the dots literally here. And in March 2024, if you have this crash rate or this crash, uh, this number of accidents, and then you are eight-folding this whole thing or six-folding, whatever this is, that does not coincide with the six-fold in your fleet size. And now look at this. So now it's getting even more interesting and sad, you know, of these, of these incidents, of these crashes, 696, 632, all the big blue ones here, no injuries. So no humans were injured. Okay. But 38 had minor injuries. Six had moderate injuries and three had serious injuries. So you had three humans that were seriously injured by Waymo. And actually what we see here, we even have a death. So there is a fatality in an accident that occurred in connection with a Waymo vehicle <clears throat> that occurred in uh, that occurred in 2025 and the 696 number doesn't even include 2025 which was an enormous ray or a rise in accidents in 2025 <clears throat> because of the scaling that Waymo was doing so here you can read what was what actually happened January 19th 2025 in San Francisco a high-speed multi-vehicle collision occurred at the intersection of 6 and Harrison Streets in San Francisco's South of Market neighborhood. A black Tesla reportedly traveling at, a, uh, traveling at approximately 98 miles per hour struck multiple vehicles stopped at a red light. Among the impact vehicles was an unoccupied stationary Waymo car. That was probably not Waymo's fault. Ironically, it was a Tesla involved who was way, way too fast. Here was another fatality, not included in the NHTSA data, it was a dog that was struck and killed by a Waymo self-driving car in 2023. So a dog got, got actually killed by a Waymo. So when you look at the human fatality, that was clearly, I mean, based on that report, clearly not Waymo's fault, but the fault of this driver, the black Tesla. But just imagine, imagine the press and the FUD that would happen if a robo taxi would in any way be involved in a crash that involves a fatality, right? There's all kinds of speculations. You can, did the Waymo do something wrong? You know, without the Waymo, would it, would it have been less bad or something? So you can only imagine what happens if Tesla would be involved here with a robo taxi. Hey, if you want to stay ahead of capital markets and the next Tesla moves, join us in Pioneerlands. Here we track Tesla, capital opportunities, AGI disruption, and politics. It's your critical information advantage in the age of AGI. It's free and the link is in the description. Let's get back to the video. So here we see the interesting statistics on the vehicle operator at the time of the Waymo crash. So the question is, did, did the Waymo have a vehicle operator? Some Waymo vehicles operate fully autonomously while others have a safety operator monitoring the ride, either from inside the car or remotely. And what we saw is that 521 of these accidents had no even remote operator, seven yes in the vehicle, which is interesting. So in 167 instances, the operator, the safety operator was inside the vehicle. And in five cases, it was remote. Here you see the speed limit. And what you see is most of the crashes happened at low speed, which is good. And Here's if the weather played a role, cloudy, quite a lot, but most of it is clear. So weather, not a big role. 
And then we have in LA city, the different cities involved that is less interesting. So that is something I just wanted to share with you that you understand that these robo taxis of Waymo are already involved in accidents and a lot of crashes. And you see these photos all over the place, right? Uh, you see the crashes like here, for example, that's pretty bad. That was like one of the heavy crashes. And these are all, you know, all over the, the web, you can see these uh, Waymo crashes. So why is this so important? I think even though it's very sad for the Waymos and even more sad for the people who got injured, this is kind of good news when I heard it. In a way, it was a relief from a robotaxi perspective because it means robotaxi is not finished when it has the first crash, you know, because there will be massive FUD and everything. But from any rational investor perspective, any regulator, of course, of course, they will look at Waymo, they will look at the statistics and they will compare it. And as long as the robotaxi doesn't have worse statistics than that, I think it's going to be okay which for me was a big relief because it takes it away from this binary question, oh God, will there be an accident with injured people? And is that the end of robotaxi? The answer is, of course, there will be accidents. And unfortunately, people will get injured because these are cars. And at scale, it's inevitable. But the good news is we now have a precedent here. We have certain statistics we can measure that against. As long as Tesla does not have much worse numbers than that, I think we should be fine. So. That's my take on it. I found this very interesting. You can see the, if you want to check it out yourself, you see, you actually don't see it here, but you'd see here, you can Google it, Waymo crash data from the injury attorneys, D, Mark, who are no and Monte, and Montevideo. Um, and I hope that was helpful. So you, now you know that not just FSD is mitigated, also the crash risk is mitigated. It's not something, it's not a Damocles sword, you know, hovering over us. Now it's very clear there are numbers, there are crashes. We have now statistics we can measure the whole thing against. And that takes a lot of risk out in my opinion. So let's see what happens. Let's stay put. Let's watch very closely where Robotaxi is going, how it's scaling, and hope to see you very soon.